We are coming to the final stages of the Mayuas trial. Finally, information has broke loose. Now, it's taking a different twist. At first, we actually thought Kelly Kumal was responsible for the passing on of Senzo Mayuwa. Not only Kimalo, Kelly Kumalo was in the picture, we thought about the sisters, Zandile Kumalo, we thought about Longwe Twala, and all those who were present. But right now, it seems like it's taking another turn. Now, Zandile Kumalo pointed a finger at someone who, accu who she accused of actually taking Senzo's life, but it seems like everything originated, or the person who signed the contract hit is actually Kelly Kumalo's biggest hater because this bigger hater turned out to actually be Senzo Meiwa's wife and it's very shocking. Now information here coming from our insider sources claim that well Kelly Kumalo had been beaten up several times and and it was Senzo Meiwa's wife Mandisa who sent the people to actually beat her up. Now Zandi Kumalo was back on the witness stand detailing her last moments with Senzo Meiwa on the night he was shot at the singer's home in Vosloros. She was one of the seven people who were inside the house when the late soccer star's life was taken away on October 26, 2014. Zandi told the court that she peeped through the bathroom door helplessly watching Meiwa crawling to safety after the shooting. She said she was in the bathroom after the shooting and she peeped through the door. I saw Senzo walking out of the kitchen with his hands in his torso, crouching. He hid between the couches. He knelt between the couch and the TV stand. While I was still hiding in the bathroom, Kelly, my mom, and the intruder with dreadlocks followed Senzo. She said the intruder noticed her mother grabbing the phone on the armrest of the couch and hit her with his elbow. She fell on the couch and the intruder took the phone and walked out of the house. At that time, Kelly was supporting Kens, was supporting Senzo with her knees. I walked out of the bathroom and went to where Kelly and Senzo were and asked what had happened. Kelly said Senzo was bleeding and he had been shot. I could not stand that. And seeing Senzo struggling to breach at it, Sandy said she remembered that when the intruders first came in, she hid her cell phone behind the couch. And I took my cell phone. I was given the fact that I was shocked. In shock, I couldn't think of a number to dial. She said she rushed to a neighbor's house to seek for help. Her mother's friend in particular. I went to Mafiri's house, which is my mom's friend, who stays on our street and found her and her niece standing outside. I asked Mafiri to call cops and an ambulance. Mafiri asked what happened and I explained that Senzo's life had been taken away by intruders. She started panicking and I kept repeating her to call the cops. She then asked her niece because she said she couldn't think straight. But they were both hysterical and I realized she wouldn't be able to help. So I went back home. Zandi told the court. She said there and then she decided to run back to her home where she found two neighbors trying to put Senzo in She the said car. she sat in the back and Senzo's with his head on her lap while Kelly was driving in Toko and Tumelo were also in the car. There was a hand towel used to compress the gunshot wound to try to apply pressure. We were all talking turns compress, taking turns compressing and putting pressure while Kelly was driving with high speed. When we were close to the hospital, I was shaking his face, trying to keep Senzo awake and telling him we were driving. The sobbing Sandy related the story to court. The court was adjourned for a short while as Sandy was giving time to compose herself after getting emotional. After a few minutes break, Sandy continued her testimony where she told the court that she tried keeping Senzo awake while she placed her hand on his stomach. I could feel him getting cold. Senzo's bedding's temperature was varying. When I put my hand on his face, it was warmer than his stomach. Zandi Kumalo said when they arrived at the hospital, she screamed for help and the nurses came through with the stretchers. They took Senzo into the hospital, into the room. We followed him behind and they told us we couldn't go into the room and that we should wait by the sitting area. We waited and my mom arrived with Longwe. My mom then asked where Senzo was and whether he was all right. I pointed to the room where he was placed. My mom walked towards that room. A few seconds later, I heard my mom crying. Kelly and I went to the room and started talking to him. I don't remember what she said to him. She kissed him on the forehead. She could swallow she arrived at the hospital soon after, but said that well. she didn't she know spoke to how he would know about the incident. incident. He order. said he was she only told that Senzo is no more. He then slid down on 
hid himself on the walls and he said Meiwa's wife Mandisa and Kaize was also in the hospital with a group of friends and started assaulting Kelly pulling her by the hair. During the assault Mandisa kept on saying Kelly you took away his life. We then tried to separate them and I said Mandisa this was not the time because Senzo was not someone who liked hostility. I asked them to be calm. The trial continues at Pretoria High Court. Now at the stand, information now reveals that this is not the first time nor the second time Kelly Kumal was assaulted by Mandisa and information still gets into the table holds the fact that well, Mandisa is actually the person responsible in some way because she sent those hitmen to actually take away the life of Kelly Kumalo. But unfortunately, Senzo was caught in crossfire. Now, what do we expect from this testimony? For sure, the judge has to take its time. The prosecutors has to take its time, assess the case, look at the story, if it matches what had actually happened. Well, I'm sure by now evidences have been tainted since, well, it's been a long time, but yet it's still enough for the stories to give us evidence of what we need. Now, this is what is actually happening because the five people who are actually the people who invaded that house are now present in court. I think the end point will be those people's testimony. From there, we're going to know if Mandisa is related to this case, if it was just the people actually trying to steal from the family what actually happened, and of course, if Zanzile Kumalo is speaking the truth. But yet, we are still to hear about the stories from the both ends of the picture, that is, the mother of the Kumalos, we are still to hear from Kelly Kumalos, we are still to hear from Longwe Twala, who was also present, and for sure, the doctor who actually assessed the case, because we have to be sure that it was obviously a gunshot, it wasn't something normal, right? We are still waiting on what is going to happen. For sure, this is taking a huge turn and we are waiting for the final word. What are your thoughts on this, guys? Please do want to share a comment in the comment section. For sure, this is a very tough case. We have waited from since 2014. We have waited since then. And right now, we are coming to the ending stage of it all. What are your thoughts? Thanks for watching this video until the very last end. Now, I have a question for you for those who have watched until this point. Do you think this story of Zanzile Kumalo is true? Recall I spoke in my previous video that she had an interview. First, she said the person who came into the house didn't have dreadlocks. And now she's saying the person who came into the house had dreadlocks. So what are you actually thinking? Share it on the comment section. We will discuss more as we go further in this case. Thanks for watching once more. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.